Can I come up with any reason I'd cover my garden in plastic? Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I made a video several years ago about the pros and cons of using landscape uh, weed fabrics or plastic weed barriers uh, to prevent weeds in the landscape. And I, I was somewhat diplomatic <laughs> you know, in that video. And I wanted to come back around and, and make a video about kind of how I actually feel about covering uh, your garden in plastic. Uh, in that video, I held up a very inferior role of landscape fabric. It's one of the issues with that video is like, well, if you use that kind of fabric, then of course it's going to be, you know, inferior. It was, a, it, was a, it was an inexpensive product. It's just what I happened to have laying in my garage that morning when I was gonna shoot it. This, uh, this Tyvek uh, fabric here is a little bit heavier duty than that one was. And then from here, we have fabrics that we used in the nursery business uh, that a lot of landscapers do use. Uh, it's a very, very heavy duty. It's got um, lines on it basically for the nursery business so we can line up pots on it. And it is a much heavier duty uh, fabric and I'm very familiar with it. I spent 23 years uh, with my own nursery and, and used that material. Guess what? It breaks down too. Uh, and uh, no matter what type of plastic material that you're covering the ground with, it has an expiration date. Unfortunately, that expiration date means that this plastic is going to break down into small bits, which are gonna be impossible to clean up. So you can go back in and pull it out later, and I would call that fabric regret, uh, which everybody's going to have. It's really difficult to get this stuff back up. Initially, is there a benefit to using a uh, landscape fabric like this? Of course there is. I mean, it's going to create a barrier between the weed seeds that exist in the soil and your new, and your new plantings. The problem is, Birds are gonna drop seeds back on top of this and weeds are gonna root into the top of it anyway. And then they actually root into the fabric, whichever grade fabric you have. You know, the, the, the higher the grade fabric, the, you know, the longer it will last, obviously, but they all have the exact same problems. Weeds eventually will grow top down, attach themselves to it, and then in the process of either pulling those or whatever you're doing, however you're removing them, you will destroy this fabric where the roots are rooted to it. And of course, any place where the sun, where it gets exposed to the sun, it's gonna break down even quicker. Definitely in the nursery industry where we're using that plastic, that heavy duty material on the top, the sun breaks it down, have to frequently, you know, every 10 years or so, it has to be, uh, has to be recovered. The biggest issues with this have nothing to do um, with weeds for me. It's about, gardening is about improving the soil, improving growing conditions for the plants. And you can't do that if you put down a plastic barrier. Uh, you can't, you, you, how do you improve the soil with a plastic barrier between your mulch and uh, on the top and your soil down below? Let me show you how much I've improved the soil here in this, uh, in this garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina over the last 18 to 24 months. Here's a random spot uh, in my garden. I'm gonna pull this back. We have clay soils here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it wouldn't take much digging down to find that, uh, to find that clay, but I want to show you if I go down, uh, here's a worm, another thing that will not thrive uh, under that plastic for sure. Here's another earthworm. I'll show you that um, right here. You know, that worm, worms are definitely not going to thrive, um, you know, with a plastic barrier down. Look how deep I can go. What I did here in this garden was I put, okay, so I can go down approximately four inches here, then I wanna show you this soil that I pull out. What I did here was I covered the ground in about a half inch of compost and then about six inches of wood chips. And I waited some period of time for those wood chips to break down. They haven't fully broken down. Not all of them have broken down yet, but look how, look at the soil. If I go down another, six to eight inches, I'll show you what that native soil actually looks like. Uh, let me get down. Yeah, I've really made a giant difference here. Okay. This right here is the clay uh, that's down below that. I just got it a little bit dirty, so it's not as red as it would be, but that's it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just solid clay down there but now I have about three inches or so of 
improved soil on top of that. If I'd have had a layer of plastic down on top of that clay, then no matter what I did over the top of it, that plastic barrier would prevent that soil improvement. It would prevent those earthworms from moving throughout all of those zones and uh, helping mix that material in. Uh, it would be definitely be very much more compact uh, than it currently is. You can see this, you know, this is something you can't do in most soils in my area. You stick a shovel in the ground four inches with one hand like I just did. You see how you can kind of see the light through this fabric? Doesn't matter what grade of fabric you get. Again, there are worse than this one. There are much better than the one that I'm holding right now, but you can see light through them. They were made in such a way, um, you know, that allows, supposed to allow light and water to pass through. Uh, these uh, little holes that are in this fabric actually get filled in uh, over the years. And that can be from uh, plant roots, can be from, can be from soil, whatever it is, uh, that stuff gets filled in. And every single time I've ever removed this material on a landscape job, and I've done it many times, had to remove this stuff many times. Um, uh, it's, it's very difficult to remove, but the, the odor underneath it uh, is very distinctive. Uh, it is definitely, it definitely creates anaerobic soils and uh, basically means there's no exchange of air uh, through that soil. So everything that's underneath that fabric is just rotting, basically. It's in a stage of rotting. Another reason not to use uh, this fabric. Are there options for this? Well, uh, you know, a lot of people use cardboard or paper, you know, newspaper, um, pe the, the painter's paper, that kind of thing initially when they're putting down beds maybe to smother grass that they want to smother and then prevent weeds. That's just as effective as this. Um, because both are short-term solutions. Obviously your cardboard boxes are gonna break down and become part of your soil. Uh, this plastic is going to, um, again, be a temporary solution because weed seeds are gonna get dropped on top of it. It's going to decline in some way uh, over, over time, um, over the years and allow weeds as well to come through it. So I just can't see any reason uh, in a garden space. The only area, um, I frequently would talk about gravel regret when people put in gravel pathways, use gravel for mulch, that kind of thing. That might be an area um, that I would consider using a heavy grade of landscape fabric under, because I know there's a, uh, I've had to remove gravel from people's beds. Uh, gravel does the same kind of thing that, gravel seems like a long-term solution to mulching and then you get weed seeds on top of it and soil fills in it and it, the gravel sinks and it, um, um, I call it gravel regret. People have paid me many times to remove gravel uh, out of beds in their yard. I, I probably would have liked the landscape fabric <laughs> under that material because it would have been easier to uh, clean up. The gravel will sink into your soil and it makes it more difficult to clean up. So maybe, you know, under gravel, but I still don't want microplastic in my soil, which is what this is going to become. You know, uh, over 10 years, you're going to see it decline and start to break down over 20 or 30 years. Almost certainly this is just going to become such a fine material, it won't be able, you won't be able to clean it. It's just going to become a soil contaminant uh, in the future. So obviously it's easy for me to make a video saying plastic is bad for the environment and don't cover the ground with plastic and all the reasons why this is actually damaging to your soil. Uh, but it doesn't help anybody with, well, what should I do? Uh, again, if you want to start off your beds uh, using cardboard boxes, just get the plastic tape and everything off of them. The glues that are in those plastic are in those boxes now are you know biodegradable, um, uh, so I don't don't worry about any of that stuff. If you want to do that, again though, a couple years from now, you know weed seeds are going to come in from the top, and the soil is going to be disturbed, and you're going to have weeds. Weeds are one of the oldest problems in gardening, if not the the biggest problem. You know the oldest problem in gardening. Uh, one way that I combat it, uh, a couple ways I combat it, I do use ground covers um, in my landscape. Uh, we actually got some ice yesterday. There's ice on top of this uh, St. John's wort, uh, but I, and I also use low spreading shrubs. Uh, I've got a distillium back here that'll end up three to four feet across. Uh, this uh, St. John's wort is a low spreading one. I have this throughout my garden. Also, I have this to reduce the amount of mulch that I'm having to use. Uh, the first time I mulched this landscape here uh, two years ago, it took about 16 or 17 yards. It's a fairly small urban lot. Uh, and the last time I mulched, it was down to 10, I think within the next, uh, the next, couple, of next couple of years, I can probably get that down to around five. And again, I'm using ground covers and low spreading shrubs uh, to eat up a lot of that space and block out the sun and prevent weed seeds from easily germinating. Mulch timing uh, is important. We get 
Uh, a lot of our summer weeds actually germinate when the soil temperature hits around 65 degrees in the spring. For me in my area, that can happen sometime between mid-March and the 1st of April. So if we mulch uh, in late February uh, into early March, that can be a great time of year to seal a lot of those weed seeds uh, in, in the ground in place, prevent the light from getting to them, prevent um, you know, air from getting to them and allowing them to germinate. That same thing can be repeated uh, in the early fall. We tend to get our chickweed and hen bit and a lot of our winter, a lot of our winter weeds germinate uh, mid fall. And so a light application of mulch at the beginning uh, or let's say the end of February and then again sometime in October, that, doing that twice a year uh, can help prevent a lot of weeds. You're not going to eliminate them all. You're also not gonna eliminate them with landscape fabric. That's just not a, uh, you know, uh, not, not, a, not a thing. So again, I wanted to come back around and make this uh, video, show you how this plastic breaks down uh, in the environment, uh, show you what it looks like in the future, and to tell you that it's not an actual solution. Uh, and uh, gardening has so much to do with improving your soil, and that landscape fabric will steal that away from you, is, is, is literally what it will do. So thank you guys for following along. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for upcoming content. Thanks for watching.